Well, so um, you were very surprised in a way, even though Mr. Guillen was an older man and we knew he was struggling with his health in the last uh, years. Still, you kind of thought he would live for eternity and maybe in a way he will live for eternity in his thoughts and in his, um, in his sayings. But it came really as a surprise and particularly also because the person who told me was Ibrahim and he explained me with such sadness in his voice and I could feel it hurt him so much that you could feel the impact that it has. It's not just one man who passed away, but he, it, this has an impact and an influence on the entire movement. And that's what makes me particularly sad. I have never met uh, him, Mr. Gulen himself. So I would have loved to meet him and to, to get to know him, but that was not possible also because of his fragile health um, these last years. But what is remarkable about the Hizmet movement, and that is something that I would not say easily, is that we uh, deal with a lot of human rights violations, both in Belgium and internationally. We have been fighting for many years against these human rights violations that are happening to the people of the Hizmet movement. But I've always been so surprised in how respectful, in how intelligent, in how open-minded every single person that I've met of the Hizmet movement is. And that is something that is very rare. You always meet, generally speaking, a big diversity of people, all sorts of people, good people, bad people. But in the Hizmet movement so far, I've only met very intelligent, well-educated, open-minded people who try to build bridges. And that is something that is really exceptional in my opinion. Well, that's the billion dollar question, I would say is uh, it's first of all not up to me to to say how the the movement should organize itself but i will be very interested to see how it will evolve because it's definitely true that when the leader the creator the founder of a movement passes that it heavily affects such a movement and i would imagine that that would be the same for the hizmet movement the only thing that i hope is that a very open-minded constructive uh, ideas of more uh, teaching and education for people, more uh, constructive dialogue with people, that these ideas will not disappear and that the people who are inspired by Mr. Gullen's ideas, that they will continue to, to share the message and to live according to these ideas. I think that the world and also Belgium and hopefully in the future Turkey will become a better place when that would, uh, would happen. Well, so as I said, the most important lesson that I've learned from Mr. Guillen is an indirect lesson through the people who were inspired by his ideas. And when I see how they behave in society, how they try to contribute to society, how, to, how they try to help society to become a better place for all people, then I would say that the best potential message that Mr. Guillen could have given is through his followers and these followers have been amazing so that's for me the most important lesson that i've learned from him well i would also be very interested to see where that is going in a sense that this witch hunt because i cannot call it any different against the, the followers of the hizmet movement this witch hunt that the current regime in turkey is is uh, uh, effectuating against them uh, i hope it calms down a little bit uh, now that Erdogan understands that he is really destroying his own country by harassing these people and creating more polarization, more hate in society. Because I think if Turkey, which is suffering at the moment because it's not going well with the country, if it wants to get somewhere, it will need a lot of intelligent people from the movement to get back on its feet. So. I'm always a positive person. I always believe that things will get better in the future. So I hope perhaps that if there should be something that comes from the passing of Mr. Gulen, it's also that it perhaps gives some insight to the regime of Mr. Erdogan and that he understands that it's time to move on and to rebuild society rather than to destroy it. I think the most important thing with regards to these rulings of the European court 
is to emphasize, because you started your question with saying the Hizmet movement is a controversial movement, but I would ask you the question, for whom? Because it's only controversial for one country, for Turkey. And for all the other countries in the world, and for United Nations, for the European Union, it's not controversial. It's clear the Hizmet movement is a perfectly fine, normal organization and has nothing to do with terrorist activities. That's simple. The only thing that I regret is that the European Court took a very long time to come to very obvious conclusions that all human rights defenders and activists shared for many, many years, is that the rule of law in Turkey is disappearing. And that's what the European Court finally held in the Helsinkaya case. It took a long time because the court was also a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of cases that came uh, to it from Turkey. So they tried to push back and to make sure that not too many cases came to the European uh, courts. But the ruling in Yalsikai is very clear. There is no more rule of law in Turkey. Turkey needs to take care of it and do something about it. So far it has not done so. And the only thing that we hope, particularly speaking, is that the European court continues to have the courage to do what is right and to make sure that human rights are respected also in Turkey, even though it is an important partner of the court. There's many cases on Turkey that have to be decided uh, by the European Court, but that it keeps to do what is right. And I would also want to emphasize that, and it's also important for Turkish people to remember this, is that it says a lot about uh, your society when you look at how your society treats the weakest people in its society. And when we look at Turkey at the moment, you could say in a way that the Hizmet movement and the people, the victims of the regime at the moment, they are in the weakest spots because they lose their uh, society uh, places, they lose their property, they lose their fair trial, they lose their families, they are in, put in prison, tortured and so on. And so if as a society you see that you don't treat your weakest people right, then you know that one day you will be in that spot yourself because society turns around and it moves and in, in, in the end you one day will be in a weaker spot in, in society and then it will be you who is treated that way. And so I think it's very important to understand that when you look at the Hizmet movement that Turkish people should understand that this could have been anyone anyone who dare to oppose a regime which eventually com will come to an end and will be replaced by a new regime. And so you really have to defend and protect these principles of the rule of law, of open dialogue, of multiculturalism, and these principles, and that is what Mr. Gunn uh, did understand very well, are really the cornerstone of what a good society should look like. Open-minded, extraordinary people.